The United States has released a much-awaited report into the state of the country's corn and soybean crops. G20 leaders will use the figures to decide whether or not joint action is needed to stop the price of food from rising worldwide. John Hendren joins me now from Brookston in Indiana in the Midwestern United States. So the report is out, John. How does it fit with the picture behind you? Well, it's harvest time here in Indiana, so we're finding out what the results are of the drought and this year's corn crop. You can see the combine behind me. That's a vehicle that's sowing the corn that has been growing all season. It's going to put it in that truck over there soon. And what they're finding is not good news for the corn crop, and it's consistent with what was in that report. This farm here is reaping about 60%, 50 to 60% of what it would normally reap. So that is reflected all over this nation. We talked to a farmer yesterday. His name is Doug Morehouse, and uh, this is what we found. A global harvest of scarcity begins here. In many places we have half a crop and I would certainly consider myself lucky to have half a crop when I know personally several, several people who have zero crop. The soil parching drought that swept the American Midwest hasn't stopped fifth generation farmer Doug Morehouse from reaping his corn. There's just a lot less of it. It's by far the worst I've ever experienced in a situation where you spend a, a large percent of your income on food, it is, it is going to be absolutely devastating. August and September rains eased the drought for other crops, but for corn, it was too late. Sweltering temperatures and dry weather came as the crop was pollinating, so many corn stalks never produced corn. That set off a chain reaction. Prices, which nearly doubled from 2006 to 2011, doubled again in the past year. That's driving up the price of corn products. Ranchers who feed corn to their cattle are selling off for slaughtering their herds early. The effects span the globe. I'm well, sure the United States is a major exporter of, of food, and, and we're the number one exporter in the world of corn. So at both the commodity level and the retail level, this is going to impact prices globally. Lower yields at harvest time in fields like this mean higher prices for everything from beef to soft drinks to fuel, from Indiana to India. Like other farmers, Doug Morehouse worries that fewer cattle will mean fewer customers for corn feed, that soft drink makers and others will decide corn is too expensive and replace it. But he remains philosophical. Fortunately, I am, uh, have, the, have faith uh, and, and a lot of prayer and uh, uh, the ability to accept what, what God has, has, has laid at our doorstep has been very helpful to me. For this year anyway, what the rest of the world finds at its doorstep and on its grocery shelves is less plentiful and more expensive. The U.S. government found that the U.S. crop production in corn this year is about 13 percent below what it was last year. That's a big deal here because corn is about half of all the crops grown in the U.S. That's going to translate into costs rising on global grocery store shelves, and the current estimate of that is an increase of something like 3 to 4 percent in the next year. Back to you. John, thanks very much.